If you have a Toyota Tundra, chances are you saw our NSV light bar video that we posted on this exact same truck, and we've got the truck back in for a little bit more light. Today, we're gonna to be installing the Diode Dynamics Stage Series light bar in the bumper. If you thought the NSV light bar was impressive, this thing is unbelievable as well. It installs very simply, and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to do it. Now the light bar we're gonna be installing today goes in this lower valence here that's in the bumper of the truck. Diode Dynamics also makes a kit that goes behind the grill that allows you to install two light bars. We have a separate video on that if that's something you're interested in. And of course, as I mentioned in the intro, we've got the NSV light bar video as well. So if you're looking to completely brighten up the front of your Tundra, this is a great place to start, but we got a lot of other videos for you guys as well. Now this one installs very simply. You can use a pry tool, get below this little grill here and we're gonna just pop it out. Use a flat screwdriver or a pry tool. You can work along the bottom here. Press the bumper down and press this little grill inward and you can release the clips. Work your way from left to right. Now you can install a 30 inch light bar by Diode Dynamics with the 30 inch kit or you can do like we're doing in this video today and install the 42 inch kit. If you're doing the 42 inch kit, you will not reinstall this grill. If you're using the 30 inch kit, you can reinstall the grill. The light bar goes behind this opening here. As you can see, I've got all of the bottom clips loose. I've got the sides loose and at this point you can push the whole grill upward like this. There's just a couple clips along the top. Use your flat pry bar and just work your way across. With all the clips removed, the grill's gonna fall and you can just turn it like this and pull it out of the bumper. Now there are three nuts per side we need to remove to install our light bar brackets. As you can see from the front here, you can see the very top nut. It's a 14 millimeter nut and the other two are easier accessed from below the truck so you can lay under the truck and loosen those up as well. This is the bottom 14 millimeter nut. Go ahead and remove all three of these. As you can see, I'm removing all three nuts from the bottom here. Repeat the same process for the driver's side. At this point, we can install our light bar brackets. Go ahead and reach this through the opening and set it on the studs that we just removed the nuts from. Now, before we mount the bracket itself to the truck, what we want to do is install our light bar first. We're going to install both brackets into the opening like I've done here install the light bar between them, and then we'll attach the entire assembly to the truck itself. We're gonna position it in the opening, and we're gonna install the one bolt per side that hold the light bar in place. Do the same thing for the other side. With the brackets in place, you can push the light bar back, line the brackets up with the studs, and reinstall those three nuts per side. As you can see, we've got an idea now of what this is gonna look like. The fit is perfect. It looks like it was absolutely made for this valence here. And I can't wait to see how bright this thing is. Now that we've got the hard part out of the way, we can run our wiring. This part's a lot simpler than mounting the light bar itself. Pop the hood. Now at this point, the best place to route this wiring for your light bar is alongside the radiator here. So you can see the washer fluid reservoir to my left. Our light bar wiring is coming up through this gap here. And you can plug your light bar harness into it. We're gonna run the rest of this cabling over to our battery. You can route your wiring across, just like so. So with the wiring ran over to the battery, we can connect our battery terminals. So we've got one red wire here. This is gonna to go to our positive terminal, and we've got this black wire going to our negative terminal. Do the same thing for the negative terminal. At this point, we've got some excess wiring and we need to mount this relay. I highly recommend mounting this relay upright so that you don't get any water or moisture inside it. It's the last thing you want. And then we can run our switch wiring through the firewall. So I'm gonna tidy this wiring up after everything's all squared away. 
Last thing I want to do is zip tie it and then have to move it later. Take your switch wiring, and it's got this nice little connector here. Disconnect it, set the switch off to the side, and we need to pass this connector through our firewall. I'll show you guys how to do that now. Now we're gonna be passing our wiring through this firewall grommet right here. And in our last video where we installed the NSV light bar, we passed through the exact same grommet. So you're gonna see where that wiring went. And what I'm gonna do is just run right alongside it. If you don't have any wiring run through your grommet yet, all you have to do is slit it with a knife very carefully, pass the wiring through, and it'll come out the other side. Now, one thing I like to do when I'm running wiring like this is I like to use a wire fish. And you can make one of these out of a large zip tie at a parts store or basically anything rigid. You could even use a coat hanger. But if you pass this through first, you can tape your wiring to it and pull it through the other side. As you can see, I've passed the wire fish through and now I can pull my harness through the grommet. With our fish ran through that grommet, we can tape our switch wiring to it. Go ahead and pass your wiring through the firewall at this point and you can go to the interior of the truck pull the wiring through, make sure to leave a little slack so you can route it properly with zip ties after you're done. The hard part is done. Running the wiring, in my opinion, is the most challenging part of the install, and as you can see, if you just follow those instructions, there's not a whole lot to it. Now, you have a few options as far as where you want to mount your switch for the light bar itself. You can mount the switch to the left of the steering wheel right here. If you reach behind here, there's nothing there that you can drill into. It's pretty, pretty safe and secure. You should always double check that. This is a pretty good spot. This particular truck has a knockout panel that's not being used over by the trailer brake controller. And the guy that owns the truck requested that we put it there. So that's what we're gonna do today. This is the little pop-out panel we're gonna be installing our switch in today. They're super easy to remove from the front. You can come in from the side just like this and just gently pop it out just like that. Really doesn't take much. Now the sweet part about putting your switch in a panel like this, if you've got one, it depends on how your truck's equipped, but the sweet part about putting a switch here is if you ever remove the light bar, you go to sell the truck or trade it in, you can just get a replacement one of these, pop it in there, no one will ever know that you had a switch there. Now at this point we need to drill a 5 8 hole in this switch panel. Go ahead and center the bit. Now this is what your switch panel should look like after it's been drilled out. Now as you can see on the left and right, there's not much margin for error. So make sure you measure carefully, drill slowly, make sure it's going exactly the way you want it to. Go ahead and insert your connector here, pull your wire slack through, and we'll click our switch into place. Should look exactly like this when you're all done. Now route your wiring through the switch panel opening, and install your switch. Now go ahead and connect that to your light bar wiring harness, zip tie the slack, making sure it's not in the way of any pedals. Let's check this light bar out. That diode dynamics bar mounted down low like that on this Tundra looks great and it puts the light exactly where you want it on the road. Now, if you're looking for more lights for your Tundra, we do have a long video on the NSV light bar, both showing you guys how to install it, what it looks like on the road, what you can expect from it. It's a crazy piece of technology and it looks really cool on these Tundras. And if you need just a little bit more light yet, we do have the diode dynamics stealth mount system that goes behind the grill on the Tundra. So if you want the brightest Tundra in town, Check out our channel, we got a lot of videos on them and we'd love to show them to you.